Yeah, baby. Wonder if all my bad decisions get accounted in the algorithms. No statistician could dissuade me from my bigger vision. I know my occupation's quite an unlikely place in this world to occupy and talk about upon a daily basis. Our information's predetermined by some biased business. We all in sermon to silicon that push our lovely neighbors. I'm done with paper chasing, think I'm on the bigger banquets. Miss that full circle, new wave, energy on a Tuesday. Turn a blue day to a bright hue, yellow with a smooth day in hair, extra fruité, the brand. You can't move me, the music is man It's a con job, but this grand I'm blessed with a great hand amongst many that stand Yeah, it took some hard work, lined up, play a huge role And they say that I don't, but they're feeding you fool's gold And if I know one thing, the truth's home Even if it's a tough thing to swallow An even harder thing to hold And truly know without a doubt while on the globe Even though that seems inherent It ain't always so apparent Dangle carrot, you ain't always gonna get it But don't worry, it's a pretty February In a year with more to carry And more days is yet to come Under the sun taking the ferry to the city Where the moment's extra pretty Like the people, like the idea that I keep inside my brain That isn't equal to the real world All that stress ain't saving me fear though I swear to God I'm trying But they pushing the demons down my esophagus Screaming the easy life, what I want all of ways Praise made up holidays, tell me that love is the answer Just to boost this economy Mine more sell now, but I ain't following I ain't a hollow man, I'm full of them fall winds Take it all with a tall crane, and if you feel it Do it with me and just sing what the song says. Take it all for what it is. It ain't all so big. Take it all for what it is. It ain't all so big. Hello, hello, hello. Hey, y'all. It's me, SB. Everyone is having a marvelous hump day. It's hump day Wednesday. I hope everybody's doing well. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you so much. Um, We're going to have a good show tonight. I see some of y'all are already chiming in. Um, It's going to be a good show. I just been hearing so much in these streets, in these YouTube streets and spaces. And I just want to give my opinion about it, guys. I really do. I thank you guys for being here. Today's show will be who decided that marriage is no longer an option. And y'all going to y'all gonna hear about what I'm talking about. Y- y'all got to give me time to uh, just talk about this, right? So um, I first want to tell y'all something. And I want to say hello to my new TikTok family. If y'all don't know it by now, I am over on TikTok. I mean, they are really supporting and commenting. So if any of you that are in the live right now that are in the chat that are not subscribed to me over on TikTok, make sure y'all follow me over on TikTok. It's somewhat the same of what you see, but you might see some other shorts and some other videos and some comments that I'd be making. <laughs> y'all know I'd be like to make comments. So you might find something different over there. So go over to TikTok. Follow me there. I would appreciate it. But those of you who came to us from TikTok, thank you so much for being here. And again, thank you for this hump day live. I appreciate it. All the support. Okay, listen. On Friday at 4 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we will be having the 4,000 subscriber party. Dearly beloved. Yes. Friday, 4 p.m., we will be having our subscriber party. I need all of you all to be here. We're going to ask some questions. We're going to give out some prizes. It's going to be fun. I'm going to show more appreciation to all of you for subscribing to my channel. I appreciate you so much. And I'm going to talk to y'all about a little bit because I don't know if all of you know my story from the beginning. But we're going to go through it. And I'm going to tell you about some of the... um, other YouTubers and influencers that have influenced me along the way. Make sure I give a shout out to them. Hopefully we can reach out to them. Maybe they can show up and peek their head in. I don't know, but we're still going to shout them out because they did inspire us to get to where we are now. And um, listen, thank you so much for your continued support. We are moving and I don't know how many we got now, but we're well over 4,000 now. But anyway, 
I appreciate y'all for doing that. Again, those of you who have uh, been in my lives before, y'all know that we do the money line when the um, super chat is over nine dollars and ninety nine cents. But we do the money line. No, we don't. We only do the money line for nine dollars and ninety nine cents and up. But we read all super chats. So I'm going to apologize right now. If for some reason me and my co-host. Hey, Mr. Boss. And we should dearly beloved miss your super chat. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. But remember, nine ninety nine and up gets you the money line song. Money line. I'm gonna it every time. You see that? What's wrong with my what's wrong with my co-host tonight? He already starting trouble. <laughs> But anyway, uh, I just wanted to make sure you all know that if you've been here before, you know that if you haven't, thank you for being here. And definitely, again, we read all super chats, but anything over nine dollars and ninety nine cents, you get the money line. But um, again, I'm going to take my time with this, guys, because um, I'm very puzzled and ashamed, <laughs> somewhat ashamed, not that type of ashamed, but kind of like that because it's 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 today's topic is um who decided that marriage is no longer an option and i came up with this for several reasons and it's just been compiling and things have just been being said and i'm just hearing more and more and more about you know marriage has not even been an option we don't even think about marriage being an option and when i mean what i mean by an option i mean an option to cover us an option to have good life, an option to live in, an option that we don't have to live uh, in this world with so much chaos. We don't even see it marriage as that. Nobody even looks at the institution as marriage as being a covering anymore or even being married as a factor or even how do you even do it? You know, it's not even about that. It's not even about that, but we're going to get there. But before I get there, I'm going to say hello to a few people in the live, like we always do, and welcome you all here. And I thank you so much for being here. Boss Lady Iris, hello. How are you? And thank you for being here, Dr. Dr. Steele. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you all for y'all's support. Dusto, Scam Likely, thank you for being here. T. Shaw, how are you? Thank you for being here. Larry Cash, Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank y'all for y'all support. Um, the Antisocial Socialite Podcast. Thank you so much for being here. And I love your your um, engagement and your comments. Thank you for being here so much. If I forgot somebody, y'all please forgive me because we read them backwards today. But I will definitely give you the thumbs up or I'll give you a little wave as you come in as the live is going. And remember, as you're coming in the live, make sure you give us the thumbs up. Was this Q quit? Oh, I can't. Let's see. Q quit. <laughs> Equita. <laughs> I am so sorry. Q quitta ward one. Now I have no idea. I, I know I messed that up. Q quitta word one. Oh, quitta. Quita, maybe. Quita. Okay. Hello, Quita. Thank you for being here. I'm sorry I destroyed your name. Forgive me. Maybe one day you can come on the panel and pronounce it for me and we can get it right. I hope so. <laughs> Thank you for being here, though. But um, I've, I've been struggling with this one, y'all. Not really struggling, but it's just, it's just uh, uh, um, it baffles me that marriage is not an option because it seems here on these YouTube spaces, we have so many issues. <laughs> women and men, um, women alone and men alone have so many issues and then women together we have issues and to me the issue is finding yourself a, a nice woman or a nice man and becoming one with him and being him or her and be being married to me that is the that's the ultimate answer to all these issues that we have but apparently um somebody has decided that marriage is no option hmm so let me just start like this about a week or so ago mr logic Hey, Logic, I hope you're, I hope you're somewhere out there in the chat land. If not, I know you said you were going out of the country, but wherever. If you're listening to this, hello, and I appreciate you so much. But I want to kind of start with something that you said. Mr. Long, how are you? And what you said was um, you talked about reality and you talked about the laws. And that one law or system that you spoke of was child support. And you were saying, you know, that you really think and feel that this you know, the reality is not fair. You know, the, the child support system is not fair at all. 
you know, women have options to do this. You know, they have the option to have the baby. Men don't have, the, you know, you spoke of that. And the reality of it is, is that a lot of men own child support and that's the situation. And you know what, guys, I saw a video today and I'm going to do a reaction to this video where I think he was a congressman stating that um, they are now going through the DNA and like 30 percent of DNA or 30 percent of the child support cases, they are fraud. So women, we got to do better. They are fraud. The men who are paying child support are not the fathers. If I if I heard it correctly, I'm going to do my little research before we bring it to you to recap. But if I heard him correctly, about 30 percent of the child support cases are fraud. That's bad, ladies. Um, we didn't know who we were sleeping with and we went on and had a baby and we put it on the wrong one. Now, because they were talking about the DNA and who does the testing and what have you, about 30 percent are fraud. So I understand Mr. Logic and all the other men that are in that system. I get it. I get it. But see, we talk about this stuff and, and, and we talk about, you know what, we really need the women to fight for us. We need them to go protest and get this system uh, revamped because it's not fair. And and it's just it's awful towards men. The whole system is just geared towards women and and we're tired of it. I'm frustrated and I get it. I understand. And I even agree with you. But this is the one part we never talked about. I never heard anybody say it, but I'm saying it now. How come we can't just take care of the problem? Why we got to go fix the system? Because let me just share with y'all about this system, because y'all know everybody knows, but it's like we don't even think about it. We don't even use it as an option. But let's think about this system. These United States that we live in was founded and, and governed. It is governed by traditional men, the patriarchy. Y'all. They wanted this United States to be based on traditional family values. Y'all know that. Y'all know that it's traditional, traditional family values. They wanted the nuclear family and they believe strongly in legacy. And these people still living and they're still in place and they still making the laws. Y'all know that, too. Nobody anticipated bastard kids. Can I say that? Nobody anticipated that. So these laws and these, these systems that we have in place now, child support being a major one, are a reaction or a response to a problem that we have. And y'all know what that problem is. Marriage outside, excuse me, sex, having babies, or impregnating women, men and women getting pregnant outside of marriage. So I'm going to say that all again because I feel like I messed it up a little bit and I, I want everybody to hear what I'm saying and I want y'all to follow what I'm saying. These United States that we live in was founded by patriarchy. Let's just say it that way. Traditional men. They believe in the nuclear family, husband, wife, children. They believe in legacy. That's what they believe. Let's think about it. Trump, how many, how many, uh, how many generations does Trump have in office right now? Let's uh, let's think who um, the Reagans, the Bush, the Kennedys. This United States was founded on traditional values. They want and believe in legacy. Nobody knew about the B children. Or I should say the children that were born out of wedlock that the fathers and mother were not together. Y'all know I'm talking about the bastard children. They didn't plan for that. So child support court and all these laws that are in place now, these are responses or reactions, I should say, to a problem that we have. So you're going to ask a group of men who never anticipated this to happen in the beginning to fix something that they're making money off of? Because guess what they figured out? They figured out a long time ago. This is what they were trying to do. They were trying to deter you from getting caught up in this situation because they said, surely. I can already I can almost imagine the conversation. Surely if the court get involved and they make them pay and, and they'll take their driver's licenses and they'll take their passports and they'll they'll just inconvenience and inconvenience them to death. They will not continue on with these practices. We'll get back to the nuclear family. Is that what y'all thought they said? Uh -uh. <laughs> I bet you anything they said, you know what? 
If we keep making the laws more stringent, they're going to continue to mess up because they're not going to be able to get out of it. And we're going to make more money and more money and more money. And this is what we have. But guess what? We complained or we want to protest the system of child support, which I think should be done because the law should be changed. It should be fair. But nobody ever mentioned, let's take care of the original problem. Men, women, how about y'all don't have any babies unless you're married? Married? Dearly beloved. Married? What's that? What's that what I'm supposed to do? Marry her? Oh, who did that? Hmm. So I'm gonna tell you some stuff I've been hearing. I think it was this morning. I heard a young man say on one of these panels, he says, so I'm only supposed to have sex with a woman that I'm supposed to uh, like enough to marry or have a baby with. I mean, can't we just have recreational sex? Now, let me say that again, y'all. He say, uh, we're only supposed to have sex with people we um, want to have get married to or have babies with. And y'all, I'm adding to it because he didn't say anything about marriage. Let me, not, let me not lie on this young man. He said, are we only supposed to have sex with women that we're willing to have babies with? Yeah. I mean, women like recreational sex and men like recreational sex. Why, why we can't just have recreational sex? That's what he said. Now, you know what? I didn't I didn't put so much into what he was saying because I clearly understood where he was coming from. He's coming from a place of I don't know no better. But what bothered me the most is there were elders. There were people on that panel that were older. And instead of correcting him or giving him an option. They allowed him to continue on his thought process process and never once said, hey, 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 listen. We do what we want to do. But the reality of it is, is sex is for procreation. It's a purpose for sex. And when you do things outside of their purpose, you end up in situations that you don't like. It makes an easy life hard. So if you don't want to be with a woman or excuse me, if you don't want. Yeah. If you don't want to have a baby by a woman, you probably shouldn't be procreating or doing the process of procreating with this woman having sex. But nobody on that panel say anything to him about becoming married. You know what they said? Well, the reality of it is, is that they went to reality. They went to reality. What exactly is reality, y'all? What exactly is, is reality me doing what you do? And then we all getting together doing it wrong. Are being out of order is being out of order reality and is it okay? No, it's not okay because guess what? That's why we end up in all this chaos. That's why we have children that have no direction. That's why everything is just out of order. That's how we have little kids identifying with animals. We have kids identifying with the opposite sex because we don't have the, the order and the discipline because we don't have the nuclear family to show these young people how they're supposed to be and what gender they are, how the role they're supposed to pay, play in this world. We don't have that because marriage is not an option. And procreation now is reality or recreational sex. And nobody's saying this is not okay. But mm. you want the founding fathers who created this United States the way they did, traditional men who wanted and was inspired by the nuclear family, they still live in the nuclear family. They still have their family and children, children following them and doing the same thing that they're doing generation after generation. And you want them to fix the problem? No, 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 no. You want them to manage the law so we can feel better about what we're doing instead of getting back to the original problem, which is marriage is an option. Dearly beloved. So I'm just asking, when did, who decided that marriage is no longer an option? I'm just going, we're going to just get really into it because I need to know. Because we are a lost group of people. Now I'm talking about people of my own race. We're lost because guess what? I heard the other day. Well, no, we're going to go back to logic. When logic was here the last time, Kirk was here too. Kirk, if you're listening, hello. Kirk said to logic, you know what? There's 15%, 15% of the 
uh, individuals or people in the United States are black people, 15%. So I'm going to tell you about this guy, this 15% that Kirk was talking about. He was like, you can't blame the, the creators or the founders of this United States for what this 15% do. That's what Kirk was saying. That's Kirk's argument. But I'm going to go a little deeper than that because I'm just going to give you some numbers. They're not real numbers. It's just my analogy. This is my thought process. The 15%, that could be close to being real, but some people say 13. So 13 to 50% to 15% of the United States is African American, right? So I'm gonna give you this, seven and a half percent don't give a damn. I'm gonna say it again. Seven and a half percent don't give a damn. And you got another seven and a half percent that do care. They care about their life, they care about their children, they care about where they live, they care about this world, they care, right? But the problem is, is that other half, that seven and a half percent that don't care, those are the ones who don't know. Well, you know what? We got seven and a half percent that don't care. I'm going to say about three percent of those people don't know. And then four and a half, they really, really don't care. Because back in 1960, y'all already know this, in the 60s is when the welfare system started. The government said, listen, ladies, ladies, if their name were Linda, listen, Linda, listen. I'll give you money if you get rid of that man or don't even marry him. And guess what? That woman decided, I'll take the check. So back then, the woman decided. The woman decided. Marriage is not an option because I want this check. Guess what? It started back then, y'all. She decided she didn't want it because she said she was going to get a check. Now, guess what? They, 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 I'm sure they made it sound real good. This check, this check is going to be double what he makes. I'm sure they didn't say that, but it probably looked that way. And you're going to be able to do this and this and this and this. Y'all, it's 60 years later. And that system has grown. We're talking about the welfare system. It has grown so much. And they still not getting married. And they still doing the same thing they were doing back then. Scamming a lot of them. So, who decided the marriage was no longer an option? And then we're coming forward because we're here still in these United States. They decided. Remember, remember our people. Some of them, I just got to know here, seven and a half percent of them are children. It's not that many children. I don't know what's the numbers. Remember, y'all can play with those numbers all you want to. I just gave you some numbers because there was said to me that there was 15 percent black people or African-Americans in the United States. I'm just telling you what we look like. We never got off the welfare system. What we did was what, what we call it. We just used it and we continue to use it. And that a, a large group of those people, if not all, don't care. I said it. They don't care. They don't care. They don't care about procreation. They don't care about being married. They, they're, they're not wives. They're not husbands. They would be what I call darn near get overs. Unless they're using the system for a time to get to a place to get to do better. If they're not, they don't care. They don't care. Then you got another group of people who those are the ones I say just don't know. And that was the young man earlier today. Although I thought he sh was of an age that he should know better. But he don't. Because he sit there and say, so women like recreational sex and men like recreational sex. So are y'all telling me I'm only supposed to be having a sex with a woman if I'm willing, you know, to have a baby by her? But guess what, sir? If you having a recreational sex and a baby is produced within that, now what do you have? You have child support system. And you know what? You don't want to be a part of the child support system because it's not fair to you. But nobody mentioned y'all, hey, bro. You might want to watch out on that recreational sex because uh, there's an option for you to get married and that, re you know, that recreational sex could end up wrong. It could end up bad. We could end up, you could end up on the short end of a stick. You could end up with a wrong woman. Y'all, 30% of the cases, child support cases are fraud. I'm going to get the story and make sure I hear it right and, and make sure I do my work. But they say 30% are fraud, y'all. 
So I don't know if the women are intentional or if they just don't know, but 30% are fraud. That's wrong. We dropped the ball. So why are we not saying, you know what? Marriage is the answer. Because guess what? You get your husband. It ain't going to be perfect. You get your wife. It's not going to be perfect. You're going to have issues because we all do. I'm a woman. My husband's a man. We have to grow together. We're not going to love each other every day, but I'm going to like him hopefully every single day. Because I'm going, I'm going to be in my purpose for being a woman. I'm not going to be out here uncovered. Men, I'm telling you, unless you decide that you want to live your life a certain way, you are uncovered. You will continue to want to protest these laws when it applies to you. But you got to keep in mind, these United States was founded by traditional men. They were the patriarchy. They believed in nuclear family. So if you're not doing what they're doing, it may not work out for you. It may not. Now, I got to say this for everybody. Not everybody will and wants to be married. Not every, you know, if you don't, you need to find your purpose. Because again, if you're out here just living, living, you're still uncovered. You are. Dearly beloved. You are still uncovered. So protesting the law. Oh, let me do this super chat. I'm sorry. Dr. Steele, thank you so much for your $5 super chat. Asking who decided that marriage is no longer an option is like asking which came first, the chicken or the egg. I know. But Dr. Steele, my titles are just what they are. I just want to know because even though Mr. Logic talked about this the other day, he never once thought about being married. He never once said, you know what? On top of us protesting and getting these laws and this child support system revamped, we need to be telling these young men they need to be married and not having um, what's it, random sex or uh, recreational sex. Nobody ever tells anybody, hey, hey, you need to cool out on that re recreational sex. Nobody ever says that. Nobody ever directs a man towards marriage or a woman. Nobody does that. But I'm telling you, if you're sexually active, and you're thinking about recreational sex, you should also think about becoming married prior because you are totally uncovered. And when you're uncovered, you might find yourself subject to child support court, welfare, and a whole lot of other systems that you never thought you would be a part of. I'm sorry. So this is why I asked that question. Why is marriage no longer an option? Why, why are there not... Oh, uh, everybody, just like they talk about, okay, well, you know, I'm gonna get another one they don't talk about. They'll talk about uh, abortions, but they won't talk about abstaining, I guess, because the reality of it is nobody's going to do that. Who, cre who creates your reality? I create, I create my reality. I'm not doing what everybody else do because it doesn't work. It doesn't work. I don't want to do everything that the people in the world are doing so we can compare notes on how, oh my God, y'all, I heard who was this? Not too long ago, somebody said, oh, I just got chlamydia. It was okay. It only lasts about a week. We're not getting ready to compare notes about chlamydia. Yeah, who does that? The reality, reality of it is it only lasts a week. That's the reality. How about this? The reality of it is you ain't got to have it. Why do we do? That's dumb, y'all. Why do we keep doing? Y'all, you create. Hey, Sherelle, you create your own reality. So why do we keep comparing ourselves to the standards of the world and expect to have good, good responses or good behaviors? Or Why? Why? Why do we think we're going to come out on ahead if we continue to do the things that the world is telling us to do? The world is telling you now, guess what, y'all? If it goes too far, I'm going to be start um, identifying as a white woman. Can y'all accept me as one? I'm going to be a white woman. Can I, what you do? What you think? Mm. You better not tell me I'm not. Because the reality of it is, if I identify as one, then that's what I am. How about that? How crazy? I bet I get all kind of pushed back. I'm protesting. If I get pushed back, I'm protesting. I'm going all the way to the White House. I got a problem. Because y'all want to allow me to identify as a white one. Because the reality says my skin is too dark. No, 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 no. The reality says my brain, which is probably mentally touched if I want to identify with something that I'm not 
I can do it though. Y'all say I can do it, so I'm gonna do it. Just as a test. Y'all gonna walk it out with me? Probably not. <laughs> but my but but all of this is for this reason, guys. We need to start. I know I am, and I know I have never. I mean, since I've been in these YouTube spaces, I've always done this. I'm gonna always push marriage because I don't want people to destroy, and I'm saying destroy their life because of reality. Because when the young man said early today, he, he basically was begging some of those elders on that platform to tell him, hey, you know, and then, then he was basically, I felt like he was begging some of them to say, look, tell me what's right. Because you don't have a question about something where you know it's wrong. He knew it was wrong to have recreational sex because the question he had really never formed itself into a question. He was just talking and they kept saying, man, you just keep going in circles. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? They kept saying it. They kept saying, no one said, listen, bro, you do what you want to do. But recreational sex will get you in trouble. You will have babies that you don't want. You will have a woman that you don't know that you have to be attached to for at least 18 to 21 years of your life. It ain't what you want. Dearly but, beloved. but no one said to him, you know what? You can't do that. You don't need to be having recreational sex with just random women. You need to find a woman date find a woman that you like and then if this is the woman you could possibly spend your life with or you know have your child then you you you, you marry this woman nobody said it y'all it's like it's marriage is going out the door i want to know what's wrong with women you know why are we so bad we can't be married married excuse me i want to know what's wrong with men why what they do that was so bad that they can't be husbands nothing nothing we create all this stuff we create all of it and it's time out for it, y'all. It's time out for it. We need to always make marriage an option. You know, again, we talk about uh, abortion. Talk about abstaining. Just take it off the table. Y'all just take it off the table. That ain't reality. Ain't nobody going to do it. Listen, I bet you right now you need to talk to some patients who have contracted HIV, who've uh, been violated, graped, and a whole lot of other things. And I will tell you that they like, no, I'm abstaining. No, I don't want to do this. So now it's, again, their reality. And if you can save yourself, that should be your reality. No, I made my mistakes. I get it. I did early. But again, me being married saved my life. And I tell you guys that all the time. And it all depends on what you want out of life. It really does. But I want an easy life. I wanted an easy life all my life. I never wanted to struggle. I never wanted a hard life. I never wanted to experience chlamydia. So I decided to say yes a long time ago. So now my new job is to tell everybody else marriage is an option. Marriage is an option. Think this way. Think better of yourself. Elevate your thought process. Think when I say elevate yourself, I'm not saying that you're low. I'm just saying think of yourself as I deserve so much more than what this world is giving me. Maybe I need to be different. Maybe this doesn't need to be my reality. Maybe my, maybe my reality is this, you know, maybe my reality is a covering. Maybe my reality is preserving myself for that man that does want me. I'm not telling you that you're low or you're not important. I'm just saying set boundaries and standards for yourself and note that you deserve more. And if being alone and not married is how you, you know, if that is your destiny and that is your life. That's okay too. But guess what? You don't have to spend all your years worrying about who your baby daddy is, where you're going, uh, where you're going to lay your head, all that craziness. You're good. You know exactly what you're doing. You know exactly who you did it with, nobody, or whatever the situation is. And you can be good and peaceful in that. You don't have to worry about all the junk that goes on in this world. And you don't have to claim it as your reality. Let somebody else live that life. And as far as the men go, I'm ready to protest and fight for fairness for you guys on this child support. Only if you all are willing and ready to use marriage as an option. Because it makes no sense for us to fight, 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 make it fair, fair, fair. And nobody changes the behaviors that got us there in the beginning. So I'll do my part. If you guys do your part. 
So anyway, guys, I just wanted to share that with you all. We're going to drop the link. I'm not going to be before you very long, but if any one of you would like to share or add something to what I've already said, push back if you like, you know, I'm willing to listen because this is not all about us. This is a life time decision. 30% of the child support cases, I heard it today, were fraudulent, guys. So guess what? This is a system that you will not win in. So why not make marriage an option? Because we, I mean, y'all, we don't even talk about it. It's like, what's that? Who did that? I do it. My husband did it. There are a lot of good successful marriage. Anton did it. There's a lot of successful marriages. Luke Casely, she's in it. There's a lot of examples of marriage. Now, listen, guys, I'm not saying that we have, have had easy lives per se, but they wouldn't hard. <laughs> I know mine wouldn't. I ain't gonna speak for nobody else. Mine wasn't. There's so many things I didn't have to concern myself with. And I appreciate the fact that my husband gave me that covering. And I think women deserve those type of coverings. Y'all should not be out here randomly or recreationally having sex with whomever. And then he leaves you. And then sometimes he leaves you with a baby. And then you meet another one. Oh, this is him. He's the right one. He's the right one. And guess what? Baby number two. Oh, gosh, gosh, gosh. Now I got two kids. So he didn't marry me either. Oh, the next one. He's, it's him. It's him. It wasn't him either. So I'm just saying make marriage an option. Keep it on the forefront. Because again, y'all, the people who created the United States, they're not going to change their direction. I mentioned a few, the Kennedys. There are gener there were generations of generations of the Kennedys. Y'all know that. Like I said, Donald Trump got generations and generations. Got Bush. Yeah, come on. Those people, their families, their whole families are involved in the pol in politics, in the government. And we probably go map it out. We'll find that all of them related in some kind of way. If we really, really, really worked hard at it. I'm not going through all that. But my only point was that it was founded on traditional, a traditional values, a mother, a father, a nuclear family and the kids. The kids followed the path of the father or the mother, how it worked. Um, but it was very much traditional. There was never any intention for the dad and the mother not to be in the home together and have children. That was never the intentions. So keep in mind that child support and a whole lot of other laws and systems that are in place now are responses or reactions to a problem that we had or have. And it's going to continue to get worse, y'all. The more it grows, the more restrictions and things that are going to be play, put in place because the kids got to be taken care of. And they're trying to force your hand to decide what you want to do because they're going to make it hard for you. Now they're making money too. It's not going to stop. So why can't we just smarten up a little bit and say, you know what? I don't even want to be a part of this system. I'm going to get me a gal. <laughs> I'm going to get me a wife and I'm going to marry this woman. And, and we're going to make this thing work because that's the answer. That's just the answer. So anyway, I had some comments. Mr. Boss said some comments up here I should be reading. And I'm sorry that I have not read these comments. And of course, the link is in the chat. If you guys want to come up and make a statement, add to, push back, I'm all down for all of that. Um, tell me something I don't know. I just been sitting back looking at it because it's a lot. Uh, Big Kev, how you doing? Auntie, there's no husband calls. We are constantly being called a simp. Listen, Big Kev, you already got yours. You are winning, buddy. And if ain't nobody told you that today, I'm telling you now, you are winning. Continue on with what you're doing. Continue what you do. If nobody's told you, we appreciate you. Continue. Continue on. Um, Vic, Vic the Kid, you. Vic the Kid, you. Um, the people who created America had recreational sex and went to brothels. I don't know that. I have no idea. And still married. Listen. I don't know that. I don't know that there are people now that that have uh, that cheat on their wives or husbands. So I'm not sure of your point. But the point I'm trying to make is they were married and their kids lived in a household. They had a nuclear family. What you're trying to do, I think, Vic, the kid is make individuals perfect. And I, I don't I don't do that because, you know what, everybody has to answer for what they do within their marriage. 
you know, so if they out slanging it this way and slanging that way, they probably cause problems for themselves too. They may be a large co uh, contributor to the abortion rights. Makes sense, right? Or they could be, you know, daddy be having them kids that don't nobody know about. Guess what? You're exactly right. Could be the case, but guess what? He was part of it too. He, I bet he got him a little inheritance sitting around and he was part, he was part of the legacy. He is part of the legacy. Y'all know it. Look, what is it? Arnold Schwarzenegger. He got him. He was with the maid. So I'm agreeing with all that. I'm not trying to make anybody perfect, but marriage is the answer. You know, I'm not talking about what these men added to it. I'm talking about who they are and what the idea was. I can't make and create people perfectly. So I hope I answered your question. If you got something to add to it, please do continue to do so. Uh, Miss Jennifer, how you doing? The new wave is that women are just choosing single life with no relationship, self-care, celibacy, and spirituality. Um, the intimacy is with me med uh, meditation and bonding with other women on a non-sexual level. Okay, so listen, Miss Jennifer, I believe what you say, that could be the case, but the woman's purpose was for the man. Now, if this woman is doing that and not having children, her purpose is still to give all praise to her creator. Now, if she's not doing that, then hey, I don't know. I'm telling you the option should be to be married. Now, if she, because not everybody will be, and if they're not, then, you know, good. If they're protecting themselves and, and all of that, then I'm, it's good. But they do have a purpose. Our purpose was to procreate. And if we're not doing it, then our purpose is to serve our creator. If we're not doing that, then uh, be careful because you're not covered in, I don't know, you know. But we know you could be at a different point in your life and and, and whatever satisfy you at the moment, let it let it be. But again... Don't get caught up in these systems if that's the case. Be careful with what you're doing. Don't get caught up in the systems. Don't produce children outside of that nuclear family and, and pretend that it's okay because it's not, y'all. It's not. I, I hear so many stories about kids that are just, <sighs> yeah, we are, we are abusing the kids. The kids are having no chance. I saw, I saw today, and I'm going to let Mr. Steele up. I saw a video today of a man getting on a school bus and y'all probably seen it too. I think it was on TikTok. This man went off crazy. These kids probably were about, they were elementary school. So you're talking about maybe fifth graders at the most. He got on the bus and talked about have some child, another child touch his kids. He's going to turn this whole bus over. Basically he, gonna, he didn't care nothing about, he's talking to kids. Was, he wasn't talking to an adult, y'all. He's going to turn this whole bus over and he didn't care what kid got hurt or all this. He just talked, talked, talked. He went off. He went off. He was so scary. And one little girl, it was a couple kids, but one little girl was just sitting there crying on that school bus. I can't imagine how that little girl felt because, you know, when I, when me, when I was little, old people scared me, especially old sick people, older people, old sick people and drunk people scared me because I just didn't know. I didn't know what to do or how to respond to them. You know, I thought drunk people was going to die. That was crazy. But that's how, you know, as a kid, you don't know. But anyway, he told me he was going to flip the bus over. And he didn't care who got hurt. And he just cussed these kids out. And these kids were just hollering and crying on the school bus. And this was somebody's daddy. Now, y'all might get mad at me, but I think this man needs to be put in jail somewhere. Just, just for a time. Because he need to get his shit together. <laughs> now, let me tell you something. If nothing else, you got options. If you don't want your child riding a school bus because she's being bullied or going to a school where she's being bullied, then you take your child and you put them somewhere else. But before you get on a school bus of about 30 kids and just go off on them and put so much fear in these kids, y'all don't know that kids are getting killed, deleted at schools now by people who are enraged or people who are silent and still enraged. He got on this bus and went crazy. He went crazy in his mannerisms, but he was crazy in the things he was saying. The kids were crying, y'all. He put that much fear in these kids. The little girl was like, I just want to go home. I just want to go home. He was a grown man. 
And then later on, he did a whole apology. I want to apologize to everybody, but they've been uh, bullying my child. They bullied her last year. Like I say, we got options. There's no way in the world that I would let my child be bullied last year and then send her right back to the same place this year to be bullied again. Sent her back, put her on the school bus, all of that. But now he's apologizing. Nah, y'all. No, 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 no. There's some issues there. You need to be, y'all got need to do something with him. Now he thinks apologizing is okay. And they'll probably let him slide with y'all, but it was not okay with me. It's not okay with me. Maybe I'm a little hard. Maybe I'm a little crazy, but it wasn't good, y'all. And this is what you get though. This is what you, this is the kind of, this is the kind of, mm, yeah, it wasn't good. I need y'all to check it out if y'all haven't yet. But um, I'm gonna go ahead and bring up Dr. Steele. Hello, Hi. how are you doing? I'm doing good. Let me read T. Shaw's comment before we get started. Um, I continue to say this. I work with the kids that have very little options. Mm, both fathers and mothers don't want them. They are homeless, not by choice. They are homeless because of selfish mamas and dads. See that? Now, I don't know this situation, but you do. So you see a lot of things that are probably just, you can't believe that this is going on. Now, I don't know if this is happening within a marriage or within the nuclear family, but I still think marriage within a nuclear family is the saving grace. Now, will we get there? I don't know, but I'm telling you, it should be an option. We need to care that much. But guess what, guys? About seven and a half percent of us don't. Dr. Steele, what you got to add to this, sir? Well, you know, I was looking at the title of this live and, you know, so many things have really, you know, came to mind about the, you know, the rift between men and women, especially in our community. Uh, I mean, it's it's so many options, you know, you know, you can start with basically the sexual revolution, the 304 culture. Yep. Saying, yes. You know, saying that, you know, they want the good vibrations without ever thinking about the price they're paying. Right. And, and, you know, that's, I mean, that's, and, and then, you know, you're getting pregnant, you know, with, with somebody, with so many men, they don't know who, who the father is. Yep. I don't think they really care to try to know who the father is and everything like that. And you talked about, you know, the welfare system options, you know, that, you know, that's also a, a factor in this as well. Right. So that's one factor. And then you look at the men, you know, the one who's actually pumping and dumping. Mm. Yeah, yeah, you know, they, you know, you know, they again, you know, have sex with these women, they find out they're pregnant, they run away. They actually run run away from their opportunity to be the leaders of a household. Hmm. That's our calling. Yep. To be leaders and providers, and those men are just running away from from their opportunities, you know, to do that. So that's so that that's another factor. Um. Also, also another factor, you know, you know, you have women who say they're strong and independent, and they don't need a man. That's a you know, you know, that's another option. So they're opting out of marriage. And the men, you know, are having an attitude because of the headache some of those women are causing them. I mean, it's just so many, so, so many factors, you know, it's out of control, for real. It's definitely out of control. And I don't think we realize that um, we're going to be punished for this. Because guess what? Um, you named a few things initially. Okay, so... The abortion law is in place, right? Mm -hmm. So that's not going to happen on a greater scale like it was. So guess what? We got more babies coming, right? Mm -hmm. And then we've already talked about the child support. They're going it's going to be more stringent than it is now. Watch, watch. Because remember the people who are in control of these things and the people that are in place, they 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 believe in the nuclear family. They believe in it. That's that's their life doesn't look quite like this. Their lives, whether the kids are bad, whether they got their side chicks, whatever it is, they believe in legacy. They know who their children are. And if they are on the side, they know who they are, too. And they don't roll them in the wheel somewhere. It's, it's, it's the others that are not getting it. 
and, and, and they're going to continue to make laws. They continue to respond and react to whatever the problems are, whatever problems we create. If we create if we continue to create kids um, that don't that are homeless or if we create continue to create kids and the mothers and fathers don't want them or whatever the situation may be, the child support system is going to continue to grow. They're going to continue to put more consequences in place. And mothers, I just started with, I saw um, a congressman, I think he was a congressman. He said 30% of those cases are fraud. Listen, I'm good with finding out that it's a fraud, but I want to find it in the beginning. I don't want to do a month in jail of five years of my check being taken. And then I find out that I wouldn't a father. Come on. Cause it's just like you just say it. They're having random sex, these women. And they just say, Oh, it's his. And for whatever reason, whatever state they live in or state or County or city, whoever governs their child support case is putting the names down and say, let's go with this one. And nobody's really caring. And, and, and look, there's a new law. We just heard about a month ago that said, that says, oh, now the mom can get child support from conception, right? So you see, you see how it's getting tougher mm. and more, you know, uh, how much do, how much do we want? You know, how much do we want? How much can, can our, our men stand? How much can the women, come on. And, and we don't see it though. We're standing back just looking at it. And we're only, this is what we're saying. We need our women to protest for us. We need these laws to be fair. No, we need to y'all need to figure out that you all don't need to be a part of these laws. Cuz cuz the laws are going to continue to be this way. They're going to continue. Okay, now you got a law that says you got to pay child support from the time the woman says she's pregnant. Come on. And guess what? You might not find out it ain't yours to after the woman the baby gets here. How about that? Now, are they going to go I haven't heard anything about a law that says they're going to make her pay all that money back. Or that 30% of fraudulent cases, I haven't heard, they didn't say anything about, oh, we, we know who these women are. These 30% represent this and they're going to have to pay this money back. Nobody's saying that. Nobody. But marriage is not an option, but they're good enough to sleep with. You know, we're not fighting the right battle. We're not fighting. We're not, we're not fighting for our life. I don't know. We, we're fighting to do wrong things. And I just don't think you win fighting to do wrong things. I don't know. It's just a spare of the moment thing, you know, you know, the, the, the good feeling that, you know, to get from, you know, from sex, you know, they just think about the moment. They don't think about, you know, and that's both of us, men and women. We don't yeah, think, yeah. think about the consequences at all. We don't think long term about anything. Okay. And this is why we're in the predicament, you know, we're in right now. It's because of the the short term think, thinking, almost no term thinking, really. It, it's ridiculous, you know. What do we do? How do we how do we change the how do we change our reality? Well, I mean, we can only do so much, to be honest with you. You know, we can do so much educating. We can do so much pleading and you know, what have you, but it's up to the people that we're talking to, to really, you know, take it all in to see what is what, to see the reality. Now, I now it's a long shot. Yeah. But I believe, you know, if everybody can make that effort, you're going to see an improvement. Yes. But what would you want to make an effort to do to change the laws or to fix the problem? To fix the problem. You can have you can. I mean, they can make all the laws we want. We can still we can still ignore them or not think about it. So it's going to have to start with us. But remember what a law is. A law is a response or a reaction to something. It's put right. in place because something happened first. So that's what we that's what we always miss. The, 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 the chain of events. You know, the chain of events is what's important. We got to control that part. And it's almost like we can't. It's almost like, oh, no, I'm just out of control. I got to do what the world says do. I'm like, what? When, when did this happen? When did it happen? We don't even trust each other enough. See, ah, you know what? It's kind of it's kind of disgusting to me because I want people to be successful and to succeed. But I can just see so many of them getting caught up in this system 
um, you know, let me read this right here. Uh, Missionary Mike says, no matter the laws, men who are sexually sexual addicts will take the risk. Mm, no different than a diabetic with uh, neuropathy. No, it's neuropathy. Neuropathy. Pathy, neuropathy. I know what you're talking about. I get what you're saying. And um, near amputation will still crack open a Pepsi. Oh, God, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. They'll be numb and they'll still want the Pepsi. Hmm. Right. Wow. Well, I mean, you know, like I said, marriage is an option. I do realize that there's a large group of people that don't know. Um, there has never had an example of being married that know nothing about being married. I get it. I do see that. Um, but I do think it's, it's the elders. I think it's an elder's, um, job to share with them that there are more options than just what we've been given or what we talk about all the time. Um, I think so. I just think that it's terrible for a group of people to sit there. Uh, people need to feel the struggle. Mr. C said people need to feel the struggle. They do. Okay, so how long, though? How long do they need to feel the struggle? Because guess what, y'all? This child support system, I don't know the beginning date, but it's been going on for a while, and all the laws are getting more and more difficult. Now you are responsible in some states from the time the mother says she's pregnant. Now, y'all do know that the only way for a woman to determine who's the child's father when she's pregnant is through, uh, what is it called? Amyosynthesis. So amyosynthesis. It's a long needle about this long that they will put through your belly to bring the fluids out of the baby, including the DNA. And then they test that. That's the only way you can find out who the child's father is prior to birth. So she can pretty much say whatever she wants to, and she can deny this test also. So if she lives in that state or that county that says we're going to do this or you can do this, somebody can and will be on the hook. And y'all already know somebody's going to do it. There's going to be somebody that's mad, that's angry, that didn't get her way or what have you, that uses these systems to get at somebody. They'll do it. They're going to do it. And they're not going to care about this man. They're not going to care. They're not. Because they're not. They're going to say, no, I don't want that test to prove it. And so that man is going to be on the hook for what, 10 months, 40 weeks. So this is the way it's going. Um, so, um, Dr. Steele, I know you are on panels a lot of times. I know maybe they don't talk about marriage at all. But if you do have an opportunity for someone or you're on a panel and marriage is the topic and it comes up, I want you to definitely speak on marriage being an option because you are a senior and you have lived your life very well. You don't have any, you're, I can tell, you know, you don't have any kids. You don't have a wife, but still you have taken care of your life. So we, it's, it's our job to tell the others, the younger folks, listen, marriage is an option. You don't have to live through this and you don't have to live this way because things right. are not going to be good for you. Exactly. They make it worse. <laughs> yeah. Now here's one thing that's really scary. You mentioned the elders. Mm -hmm. and yes. You know, we do need our elders to step up. Mm -hmm. But then there's two problems. Number one, little by little, we're dying out. Mm. We are dying out right now. All right. And number two, there are some of our elders who are basically silly enough to go along with what this generation is doing. That's two problems, two major problems right there. Whoa, they said it again. They they go say it one more time. Yeah, you know, some elders mm -hmm. who are actually going along with what you know the current generation is doing, basically. You know, that's so unfair because as an elder, I'm they they've had to have lived a certain amount of life, right? And usually your life experience is what shapes you. So it's either been good, bad, or okay. And if in, if it's good, that means you didn't partake in a lot of things that brought you negativity. Now, and if you're sharing that, you need to share how you got there. And I know most people don't get and have a good life by being reckless. You know what I mean? You don't, you don't live recklessly and come out with a good life. Typically you don't. Typically a reckless life, you get reckless results, results, you know, 
you crackheading, you're homeless, you're near homeless, been home, whatever the situation is. You don't usually one don't be, be get another, you know. So if they're just sitting there listening and agreeing, which that's exactly what they did this morning, they didn't have anything to say about um recreate a woman or a man having recreational sex. I thought that was so odd. I would think somebody would say, you know what, that's not the thing to do. But they didn't. So I'm agreeing with you. But let's read this super chat before we go on. Kevin C, how are you? How are you? Thank you so much for your $120 Honduran dollar super chat. And he says the benefits of marriage have to be mm, to be hyped the same as any other major issue. Hmm. Especially if couples produce children um, and some laws might have to be changed, might have to change. Several laws need to be changed. Several laws need to be changed. There's no way that a woman should be, that women should have, there shouldn't be 30% fraud cases of child support. That is outrageous. 30%, y'all, come on. That's a lot. That's, that's a lot. That are fraud. That should never happen. And also um, the law with you, uh, a dad can pay, a woman can receive child support from conception. That's, that, that's outrageous too. But you get the money line. Money line. So, um, Kevin, see, you are exactly right. And I also saw something on there from Luke Casey too. Luke Casey said they should have, uh, I, I don't think you said mandatory, but I'm going to say it mandatory DNA testing, um, before that, that man should sign the birth certificate in the hospital. I actually think, um, the child and the mother or the child shouldn't be able to leave the hospital, um, before DNA testing is done. I, I agree with that. I don't know why that's such a hard thing. They do all other type of testing. So I don't know why that's a big deal. Before a man signs a birth certificate, he should definitely know um, if that child is his. 30% fraud, y'all. So Dr. Steele, do you have anything else you want to add? I'm going to go ahead and move on. But uh, I definitely appreciate you being here. I appreciate your support. And as an elder, just keep that in mind because we don't talk about marriage often in other places. It's just taboo and I, I still don't understand why because we still getting together we still hooking up right <laughs> right of course yeah i got nothing else to say and and also this i thank god that you know the all the other content creators i listen to are pro marriage as well this they're, they're still you know joining the fight to bring the uh black nuclear family together so i want to shout out to them yeah, yeah, definitely. The ladies definitely do. That's why I said if you're um ever on one of those, those panels and there's a conversation where money, I mean, excuse me, where marriage is not mentioned, but everything else is, definitely shout it out because it's 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 just it's just odd. It's just odd to me. Yeah. All right, sir. Thank you so very much and have a good night. Thank you. All right. Bolo TV. Bolo. Hello, SB. Hey, how are you? Hear me? Yep. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. It's good to see. Oh, it's good to see you here. Okay. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> I'm, I'm in the spirit. You can hear yeah, my you know, voice. I, got you. I, I, can, I can accept that. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm in the spirit right now. I hear you. Um. So... Who decided that marriage is no longer an option? Wow. Um, the enemy has decided it. Of course. You know, the, the enemy know the enemy is a stupid, right? He's a he's he's been doing this for a long time. And um so what I would love for us to focus on is you know the nuances when we talk about biblical principle, because I know that's what you and Mr. Boss stand on, right? Mm -hmm. is, is biblical mm -hmm. when it comes to marriage. And the thing that we seem not to get, and the thing that we seem to forget is understanding who this guy is and what he does. And this mm -hmm. is why, you know, he says, you know, he gives us all of the instruments that we need. And the enemy is no longer coming at the OGs. 
There's no reason for him to come to the OGs because that same scripture that says you can't put new wine to an old bottle, that goes two ways. It goes for people that want to stay ignorant and it goes for people that's going to stay in the spirit. So the enemy is going to say, we're not going at Mr. Boss and Mrs. Boss. We're not going after Bola. We're not going after Mr. Steele. We're going to go at this younger generation that has not had that foundation. And, you know, and, and you know, you and I speak about this all the time where it comes to, you know, the foundation in which, you know, we're built on, you know, our foundation, you know, these children, these youngins coming up, their foundation is so weak. There's, their, their foundation is like you know, a, a, a flimsy tree. Whichever wind blows, this is the way they go. You know, um, we tend to take more time, you know, and more quality on us than in us, meaning we'll take more time trying to get our credit right than <laughs> us in front of our house. Yeah. And we spend more time trying to figure out where we're going to get that house than we do trying to just sit down and, and, and hear what's coming out this woman's mouth or this man's mouth. And this is the problem. So we use our sight. You know, we're reading Psalms right now, right, in the village. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it speaks so much on having a relationship with the father. Mm. You know, because when you have that relationship, it's like the relationship between you and your husband it's built on a foundation that you know you can trust him and he can trust you. Right. There's history there. There, ha there are things that has happened in your life that you turned to him and he turned to you and both of you were there and y'all rock solid, right? Because if the mountain was smooth, we couldn't climb it. So we have to have those rough edges to prove who we are and what we are and at the same time to learn how to scale those rocky mountains opposed to it being smooth because we can't grip on nothing. We don't learn nothing. You know, relationships are not tried in good times. They're tried in bad times. So when we're talking about these relationships that these men, there is no foundation that these young men and young women are in. They have no principle at all. It's about how I feel. It's about my truth. There is nothing written. There is nothing concrete. How do you talk to a person that has nothing but wind, who turns into a puff of smoke when you get them. It's like some of these conversations that you have when you finally get them, they, they move the goalposts. So it's like we have to have a foundation in this conversation because the conversation, you know, words become thoughts, thoughts becomes plans, plans become actions, actions become your character. So just by me having a conversation with you, it kind of tells me who you are and what you are because a lot of us tend to listen for what we want to hear opposed to what we don't want to hear. What I mean by that is when I talk to someone, I'm listening to what they're not saying opposed to what they are saying. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. So, so when, we, when we're having these conversations, we're using our sight opposed to using the Lord's vision, right? Our sight is what, you know, I, I use the sun. The sun sees it all. The sun sees it all. Man doesn't. Our sight is very limited. Our sight is bad. Do you know why when you press on your brakes, the red light brightens up? Do you know why? Mm, no. Because I the didn't human... know red light brighten up. <laughs> right. like say, oh, you the, you're talking about the brake light in the back? The, the brake light in the back. Oh, of course. Yeah, because okay, I got you. Go ahead. <laughs> it brightens up because the human eye is bad at judging distance. Right. Okay. It's bad at judging distance because of how much light we take in. Mm -hmm. so if our eye is bad at judging distance at something 30 feet in front of you, how bad is your eye at judging someone that you want to be with for 30 years, 40 years? Wow. Should we not depend on the vision of the Lord that sees it all? He laid it down. He laid a foundation down for us, but we choose to use that limited sight that can't even judge if a car in front of us is going to break. Mm. We, need, we need a marker. We need an indicator. But we think we know what's better. We think we know what's good for us. When yesterday you didn't even know how to change a tire. But today you got it all planned out. Today you got it all figured out. These are the things that we need to write. So when we read Ephesians and he says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Being strong is having a foundation in him. Being strong in the Lord is having that relationship with him and knowing that he's faithful. 
Because what we have to understand is he's never left. It's always been us. We read this book and the way we were taught in this book was from the creature's perspective, right? Because when we talk about David's, the Moses and, you know, the Sarah's and all these things, we, we get caught up into the character because it's so vivid. But we don't really sit back and understand that. Look at the temperance, the patience, the long suffering that the father put through. How the father said, I want to deal with you, but you want to be like every other nation? Mm. When you so, were... Go ahead, darling. No, no. You, well, I was going to... um, Because your point is going to what this young man, the missionary Mike, he says, um, in an on-demand world, and that's just kind of about what you spoke of, what would it be what would be the benefit of marriage with sites like Instacart, Angie's List, DoorDash, Amazon? Why do men and women need each other? Absolutely. Marriage wise. Absolutely. There is no, there is no fight. None. No fight. I heard somebody say something. He said, if you raise, if you, if you spoil your children, mm. you're going to raise your grandchildren. Wow. But if you bring them up good, you'll be able to spoil your grandchild. Think about that. Mm. If you spoil your child, your child is not going to understand the fight. He's not going to understand the struggle. And they're going to be what? They're going to be childish. They're going to want everything in this microwavable world that we live in today. So you'll be raising that child because you're going to look at your children and say, this person is going to give my grandchild a bad foundation. But if you raise your child good and you let them understand the value of money and the struggle, you'll be able to spoil your child because that's what grandparents are supposed to do. Give them the candy when the parents don't want them to give the candy. Right. So sometimes we overcompensate as parents when it comes to protecting our children, right? A lot of the times when you and I were talking and you brought out a very good point, a lot of the times when we give the information that we've learned over the years, we give that information with the fear that we've encountered opposed to just giving them the information. So we got them looking at men or looking at women through our eyes opposed through, opposed yeah. to just giving yeah. them information so that they can get their own judgment on it, right? Yeah. Right. So, so this, oh, let me ahead. say this. Let me say to um uh, say this to Mike. Mike, I want to add to this. Um, I don't know how long you've been in the in the chat, but this goes back to what I was saying about the world and what the world has to offer. Um, the world is offering Instacart, Angie's List, DoorDash, Amazon, all of that. All of these are your conveniences, and this is even maybe you accepted this as your reality, but. I, what I'm saying to you about marriage and, and who decided it wasn't necessary or wasn't an option, this doesn't offer you any type of covering. It gives you all these options to do certain things. But guess what? This Instacart, it does, it's not guaranteeing that the food is good. You can order it. It can pop up at your house, all the conveniences in the world, but it doesn't mean it's good. It doesn't mean it won't make you sick. You got somebody that can Angie's list, call somebody and help them, you know, clean your house. But it doesn't mean while she's there, she won't steal from you. All these things can happen because these are these are worldly conveniences, which, of course, we indulge in if you like. But you have to understand in marriage, becoming one with somebody is a covering. It should be. I think Bolo started like this. When Bolo started, it's a covering. It's, it's, it's becoming one with a woman or a man, you know. And, and you all are on the same page, you're on the same accord. You all have the same goal. You have a principle. You have a foundation. You trust each other. You have the same goals per se, as in goal as being married and your outlook on life. There's no, there's no outlook about life with Angie's List, DoorDash, and Amazon. These are worldly conveniences. And you can sell yourself to them, but guess what else? You might be really selling yourself because you never know how far you can go. Now we were just—you're just talking about certain conveniences. I was talking about having um, recreational sex. Now Angie's List and DoorDash and Amazon may not kill you, but uh, random sex and recreational sex will. And if it won't kill you, which hopefully it doesn't, it can still ruin your life. Because I went over several laws that that are in place that are getting that are getting crazy, more and more crazy, 
And that was not even, that was just not the design of the United States or the man. That's not what you're here for. You were here to procreate and a woman was made for you and you have an easier, better life to get back to that. Now, I don't know how I can help you see that because maybe you don't have the example, but I'm telling you, there are people out there and I just want everyone to keep their eyes open to those. That's an option to be married um, because it's more than having somebody clean your house, more than having somebody cook for you. It actually, for me, or uh, adds a balance to your life. Remember, Adam was lonely. There was a part of him that needed this woman. He was granted that. And I think every man that wants to be married should be granted that also. And it should be good. Of course, you have to work at it and make it that. But that should be an option for you. Bolo, I'm sorry about that. I just wanted to tell Mike that before that, that, uh, that, was, that comment. Was awesome because, that was awesome because now I wanted to piggyback on what you said. Yeah. Because yeah. you said it was so paramount, right? One, we have to understand that when you get these microwavable food, you know that there's no love put into it. No. Right? You know when you go to a restaurant and it's cooked to order, it's going to take 10 or 15 minutes. And you know it's going to taste good. So you know it's going to take time. So relationships is time and it's good as you go through it. It's the, the, the little small things and the nuances that is important. So what I want you guys to understand, and again, Bolo don't talk out of his mouth. This is all biblical. Right. We don't talk. We, we, we Ephesians 5, 25. Right. Because, you know, it, it's easy to say that this is what men are supposed to do. And it says. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. So you submit to your you submit yourself to your husband as if you would submit to Christ. Why? Because of whom he represents. You're not submitting to him. You're submitting to whom he represents because both of you are serving him together. We all have a place. We all have, we all have a part to play. Yes. But this is the thing that we seem to miss all the time because we always talk about women submitting. I don't think we need to really go into that. Here's the thing that we do miss. It says, for the husband is the head of the wife. We got that. Therefore, as a church is subject to Christ, let so let the wives be subject to their own husbands. We got that. Here's the thing that we hate to talk about. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ. We hate to talk about this. As being. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. The love that a man has for a wife will always supersede the love that she has for him. Yeah. Let me say it again. The love that a man has for a wife will always supersede the love that she has for him because the love that we have is supposed to be sacrificing. Like yep. Christ did. Sacrificing. So if your woman says, I'm uncomfortable, you're supposed to lay down and be her pillow. That's mm -hmm. what you want to be as a servant. Because you guys are always talking about being kings and czars and presidents and dictators. That's not Christ. That's not biblical. So anyone that says that is dealing with the devil. Period. Yeah, Bolo said it. All right. And it goes on. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or such things, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So that means he spent time with the church. He was patient with the church. He was long suffering with the church. He admonished the church. This is what we're supposed to do with our wives, fellas. Let's read on. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. I never knew a man that hated his body. <laughs> Dearly beloved. <laughs> I never knew. I never knew that a man hated himself. Because you know me, I love me. I love me, straight up. I, there's no one that I love more than me, than Christ. And Christ told me to love my wife like I love myself because she is bone of bone. The only time one plus one do not equal two is in marriage. He that loveth he, uh, excuse me, he that loveth his wife loveth himself. So you're loving yourself. So, fellas, when you say that when she messes up, you have no part in that. And we're talking about wives. We're not talking about girlfriends. We're not talking about boyfriends. We're talking about wives. You have a part in her folly because she is the extension of you. It's the same way when you send the kids to the school and they act up. Who do they typically blame, SB? The parents. Parents. So, Bola, before you go on, let me add this because I, um, Hermes Attic, she made a, a comment here and she says that um, I love my husband, but I don't do, 
I'm not into religion. And um, Hermes, I, Hermes Attic, this is not about religion. This is Bolo. Bolo is a religious man per se. I should say he's a follower of Christ and he's he's quoting the Bible. But this is not about that because you can be Muslim, you can be whatever. There are instructions on how to be married in, in all religions. That's not that's not what he's talking about. We're talking about a relationship that you have with your creator. Um, and I don't know of anybody that's absent of that. Right. Guys, I, I, I first of all, I, I don't claim religion. The Bible is not a religious right. book. Religion was built around the Bible. So right. that's that there's over 240,000 different religions. Right. Christ never said, when I die, start that church called the First Baptist Church. Never did that. <laughs> the Bible's a book. <laughs> the so Bible. I, just, I wanted to make that clear oh, that yeah, this is no. about religion it's because it's, it's, it's about your your relationship with your creator. Because I think people get caught up in that too much because we're talking about principles. And I noticed you went on to say you have a moral code. Um, pretty much. I mean, that's whether you're giving reverence to the code or not or the morals. Um they come from somewhere. Absolutely. So I just yeah. wanted to say that. I just wanted okay. to say that. And we can go on, Bolo. I was just wanting to make, make sure that everybody understands because we're not trying to leave everybody out. Definitely. Um, there, there's no, principles. Absolutely there. not. This is, listen, Christ is inclusive. Salvation is corporate. <laughs> with everybody. Your relationship with him is personal. Your relationship is personal. But salvation is for all. That's what he taught for all come through come on everyone come as you are but this is the thing that you know us as men we're not pushing and and, and when we kick this we're called simps oh yes not, you somebody know somebody said that earlier somebody said that earlier right so when i love my wife like i love myself i'm a simp right. when she is supposed to be a representative of me she is supposed to go out there and you know guys don't you know i really women where do you get that women are supposed to be in the house pregnant and barefooted because the virtuous woman in Proverbs, she was outside in the streets like the merchant ship. Working. Absolutely. Absolutely. She was working. So yeah. now we have to understand that your position in the home, it should not see a lot of the times we get into relationship built around us. And that's only going to go so far. Mm. See, when you focused on something bigger than you, the sky's the limit. When you focus on you, you already built that wall. You can right. only go so far. Can't that go with everlasting, that, you know, that everlasting forgiveness. There is none there when I, it's it's focused on just S, B, and I, right? right. When, when we're speaking about men, so it says, so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourish no. it and cherish it, even as the Lord cherished the church. Do you see how he's making the comparison? Yep. About Christ, he doesn't want you to give that earthly love. That earthly love is sometime-ish. That Some Christly love is forever. Is everlasting. Yeah. That's why he's the greatest example, the greatest sacrifice in everything, right? For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Now, guys, Ooh. here's the crux. This is it. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife. And they too shall be one flesh. Here's the thing. This is the great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, husbands, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself. And the wife see that she reverence the husband. Right. So we're supposed to love our wife. They're supposed to respect us. Respect and submit. Yes. Right. Yeah. So the love that women have for men is different. It sees it, it. It's different in their aspect opposed to the love that we have for them. It's the same way strength in a woman is different than strength in a man. Mm. Strength in a woman in her femininity is on a different level. It's on a different level. And when it's working the way it needs to work optimally, it strengthens the masculinity strength of a man. Yeah. Oh, no, it definitely does. Definitely does. An example. So, Momo, before you yes. but listen, um, missionary Mike wants you has a question there on the screen. Do you see it? It says, Bold TV, can a good man prevent a wife from becoming a Proverbs 14 and 1 wife? Let me get Proverbs 14 and 1 because I'm getting old. 
Yeah. And I'll be forgetting stuff. Yeah, because I, I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be forgetting stuff, missionary. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So forgive me. I'm an old guy. I'm gonna be 50 this year. So forgive me. Okay, you better stop talking like that because those of us that are already there might get offended. <laughs> I apologize. Dearly beloved. Proverbs 14 and 1. This wise woman builds her house, but the foolish pulls it down with her own hand with her hands. No, you have nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. You have nothing to do with that. But see, this is the point that, you know, SB speaks about all the time. Before you are a husband or father, you are a man of God. Your relationship should already be there before she is a mother, before she is a wife. She is a woman of God, because not all women are going to be wives or mothers. Some will be single, same as uh, the men. Right. But you have that relationship. You have the core foundational blueprint already imprinted in you. This is why it said that a man findeth a wife. The right. foundations, the pillars was already instilled in her by the OG mothers. The OG wives was already yeah. instilled. So when she, when he finds a wife, she's supposed to find a husband. Why? Because the OG men put it into him. So those pillars are always there. Now, whether I become a father or a husband or not, I still have those pillars because me being respectful, being a provider, nurturer, guider, I'm supposed to do that for the community also, not just for me. So those principles go beyond just being a husband. But it's good to have someone that you could do this with. It's good to have someone that you can call your own. It's good to have two people because you have to understand when I become a husband, my job is still to serve the Lord first. When she becomes a wife, her job is to serve the Lord first. We both have jobs. So my let me, job, yes, let me, let me, let's enter this right then, because, um, you know, there are people who don't 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 follow the bible and there are because right. remember when i started out i told you that oh i said i don't know if you heard me um early today i think it was today the days are going in together i heard the young man and there were elders on the panel and no one bothered to say young man recreational sex is not where it is this is not what you should be doing they actually gave him somewhat he they made it inclusive you know like okay yeah if you do it they didn't even tell them to have protected says they just made they gave some sort of general answer that made it OK if this is what you're going to do. Nobody ever told him the real purpose of sex and, and why we're doing it and and what's good and what's bad or what could happen if you do what you're saying and why women shouldn't be having. You know, no one, no one, none of those editors offered that. You know why? Well, no <laughs> reason on why men and women are not doing this, you know, in general. Hmm. They're awesome that do it. You, I, there are the Sir Hale and other channels that do it. It's because of the relationship that we have with the youth. There is none. Hmm. So at points, you know, and again, I'm, I'm, this is just a general statement. I'm sure that there are other reasons, right? Some of them okay. are afraid. They watch on TV and see how these youngins just be flipping out. So they figure, you know what? I don't want to even get involved because I don't want to get my teeth knocked out, you know, but we're afraid. We're afraid because that gap that we have between the youngins is far and wide because we think we know everything. And this is the thing that we tend to forget. We forget what we've been through. As we get older, we become so jaded that we forget that we were young and dumb. And we tend to lose patience with the youngins because we tend to say, yo, Duke, why aren't you getting this together, man? And these youngins, they say, well, you messed up too. And we tend to say, no, not like that. It's not about the levels of mess up. It's about being empathetic and sympathetic that someone was patient with you. And a lot of the times we become jaded, right? We become so caught up that we don't ever want to see that old man that we used to be, that we lock him up and put him away. Mm -hmm. Now you can't. If you do lock him up, make sure you have some pictures around to give you a remember yourself up. <laughs> yeah. So listen, uh, missionary Mike, um, I'm gonna read this comment and I'm gonna give him an answer. And Bolo, I want you to do the same. It's okay. um with the marriage rate being around 30%, does that mean the OGs did a bad job preparing, or is it the successfully married OGs are few in numbers? Um, I'm gonna deal with that first part. Uh, we did not we did a bang up job. There are not a lot of examples of um, successful successful marriages. Um, a lot of, I mean, I don't know. I guess we're going to go back to boomers. I'm a Gen X. Bolo's a Gen X. 
But um, I would say the Gen X is kind of screwed y'all over. I'm going to tell y'all, I'm just going to be honest. We messed y'all up because um, we gave y'all everything that we didn't have. And we, we rejoiced in it. I, I didn't like it. I wasn't one of those ones. I was, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm totally against it. But a lot of Gen X's uh, gave and gave and with not too many um, consequences. So that's in all things. That's, and, and that also creates your thought process or the thought processes of the millennials and what have you. So we kind of messed up. The baby boomers, the boomers, I, I don't know if they messed up. I don't, I, we are okay. I think that we are okay. But when we, when, when we got to our kids, we messed up. But as far as successfully married OGs are few in numbers, I can tell you in these YouTube spaces, they're not going to be too many successfully married people, couples, but there are a lot of married success, successfully married people out in the world, I believe. So that's my answer. Bola, what you got for that? I agree. We, 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 yeah, we, we didn't do a good enough job. We didn't, we didn't do a good enough job. And mm -hmm. you know, when that mirror is, you know, put on top of us, when these young, you know, youngins say that, you know, y'all did a bad job, you know, we tend to get very defensive, mm. get defensive. And then instead of just saying, you know what, you're right. You know, life is meant to be lived forward and understood backward. Right. So yeah, we messed up. So, you know, let's straighten that we what we made crooked. Absolutely. We yeah, absolutely. As, I would say we messed up. up. As a majority, yeah, we did a bad job. There's not enough, you know, those that did have the answer took it and broke out. They didn't go back to the, you know, to the youngins and mentored them. I told you I had a conversation with a lawyer and he was telling me, why should we do that? Remember the one I was telling you about? The lawyer, yeah. he was why mm -hmm. should a black man go and, and, and mentor mm -hmm. these other black men? So that black man that you didn't mentor won't kill you. That's why. That's why. See, the, you, you can't get out of this village mentality. Whether you, it, it's, it's like, it's like trying to forget masculine and, masculine and feminine are supposed to be in a relationship, even when right. you have men. Right. What? masculine one is feminine you have two women one is masculine one is feminine you can't get rid of that dynamic i don't care where you go you can go to atlantis you're gonna find yourself a mermaid that's either gonna be masculine or feminine you can't get away from it so when you know the village mentality is what's going to help us this inclusive inclusive being inclusive is what we're supposed to be us being in that spirit of i'm going to get mine is why we're here mm. When you look at Jim Crow, we had more of a village. Yeah. <laughs> we had more family. We yeah. had more marriages. But as soon as we were integrated, as soon as we said use free, we took yeah. that literally. I, I don't want to be around you. I'm going to do me. And when I have the answer, I leave and go to people around that is like me. How does that happen? How does that work? How does that work? How do you make the community better if you don't take what you've gotten and spread it? Some of the um, some of the chat is saying the boomers. Uh, listen, what I recall about the boomers is this is my the family and, and I'm living in the What's South. The they were pretty the strict. The huh? boomers. What's the difference? What's the difference? I get mixed up with that Gen X boomers. and We're, we're Gen X is um, our age around 50. The boomers would be our parents. So, um, yeah, they would be our parents. I remember our parents having discipline. Mm -hmm. um, they operated in duty. Uh, they're very moral people. When it got to us, though, we wanted to do everything that they didn't do for our children. And I'm talking about me and mine. I wanted to do I didn't want to do it, but I had a husband was willing to do everything for our kids that our parents would not do for us. Our kids groomed us and it was like, no, you're not going to do this. No, you're not going to do that. Or no, no, no. Let me say it differently. I'm not going to do it for you. You can do it, but you're going to be doing it on your own. Right. Mr. My Boston, parents, boy, Mr. Boston bought about four or five cars. We, we've paid deposits on, on deposits on apartments and all type of stuff. My parents didn't do that. Mm -hmm. I heard a, I heard a millennial say one day, um, 
I'm going to travel. I'm going to go this place. I'm going to go that place. And my mama going to pay for it. Word. I was like, did she did, did they say that out loud? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this is crazy. I mean, they were honest. And guess what? I found we, I, I'm going to tell you what I did do. I paid some apartments, some rents and stuff. Cause you wouldn't coming back here, you know, after college is done. So, you know, the rent at an apartment is almost a darn equivalent to vacation, isn't it? Yes. So guess what? I paid for vacation. I did it. So we dropped instead of me saying no and, and, and teaching that lesson, I was a creature. I wanted my own, my, my habits. I was a creature of my own. I wanted that empty nest. No, you gone. Don't even bother me. I've done what I had to do. Whereas our parents, they said, no, you're going to work hard. You're going to yep. save your money. That's what you want. You're going to save your money. Oh, I'll help you, but you're going to contribute a part. We didn't even care if I was the, the millennials that we brought up. We didn't care if they contributed nothing. We was like, just stay away from us right now. You know? So, you know, I'm, I'm taking, I'm going to say I messed up. Yeah, you know, I'm going to say added to that too. society in, in, in the, the social norms as far as laws, because when my parent when you know, my parents beat me. If I beat my children the way they disciplined me, they put me under the jail, <laughs> they put me under the jail because I sit back and I look at I, when my father was here and I would tell him, I would say, man, I look back the things that you did. If I could do. Could God, they would put you under the jail and he would just laugh. We would just laugh. You know, because, you know, what they did was they tied our hands behind our backs and in them tying our hands behind our backs. Again, what you just said was so paramount. We wanted to do everything that our parents didn't. We everything. wanted to make it easier for them thinking that it would make them better. Didn't I just say to you that I heard if you spoil your child, you'll be raising your grandchildren. I agree. You've done. This is why you have men and women in their 50s and their 60s where they should be traveling the earth. Raising their grandkids. So listen, let's. You're right. Let's read this. Um, Missionary Mike says, uh, "How can we rebuild the village when our neighbors went from who lives next door to who logged on social media or YouTube when we turned on the app?" You, 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 you're right. But how do we do that? How do we rebuild our village? It, it, you want to answer that first, or you want me? No, that's on you. Because I, I mean, I got. To, I know how we can. <laughs> I know how we, uh, so listen, let me just say this. We have to figure out first who's our village. <laughs> and that would make a big difference. <laughs> that would make a big difference. Yeah, it, my village don't go that far. My village yeah. goes, it's, it's directional. <laughs> listen, you understand something. A bee is not going to try and convince a fly that loves, you know, dung that honey is better. Right. Right. The bee is going to leave the fly where he's at. So again, exactly what SB said, you have to know who your village is, because again, yeah. it's so important because not only will a marriage tank you, relationships outside Ooh. of you in that circle can tank you too. Because right. when I'm having problems with my wife, who am I talking to? I'm talking to my brothers. If she has problems with me, who's she talking to? Her sisters. So at the end of the day, that relationship too can, when they pour into you, and fill up that crack, you want to make sure that they fill it up with something righteous that's going to actually help opposed to destroy you. So how does it work? So it, it starts, you know, Tommy Sotomayor gave this example. You know what I'm saying? So let me give props to him, even though this example has existed, but he said it so much that, you know, it just became famous with him. And he said, if you live in a neighborhood, if you just go outside and cut your grass and manicure your grass, Sooner or later, someone's going to come to you and say, yo, how do you do that? Mm -hmm. Be the catalyst, man. Be the change that you want to see in your community. We're waiting for people that live outside our communities to tell us what our communities need when we are the community. And the root common word of community is common. You have to have something in common that we all fight for. What is that? Love. What is that? Coming together. All eyes on, remember it used to be, you know, it takes a village to raise a child. Yeah. So yeah. if my child messed up, they knew SB and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and Mr. Boss, they always sat on the porch. Right. And they would just watch. Oh, I better not do nothing around there because they're going to tell my parents. We don't have that no more. No. We don't have that, we don't have that relationship anymore. So we don't even have porches anymore, a lot of us. <laughs> 
We got projects now. We don't so, have it's like, well. yeah, so, so that's the issue. The issue is the mind frame. The issue yeah. is looking at the cup half full opposed to looking at it half empty. The, the, the issue is stopping, being still, right? And stop functioning in your trauma. Let's start healing your trauma. Stop functioning in it. Stop thinking that you're okay when you're not. Stop thinking that your mother telling you that you're a young man at six years old, that you run the house and that's okay. It's not. Let's stop thinking that that man that touched that little girl, that that's okay. It's not. That man that's abusive or that woman that is out of order, it's okay. It's not. It's not. So let's stop functioning in it. Let's start standing up for truth. That's how it starts. It starts with you saying, I'm going to be the love. So when I see SB in the morning, good morning. Mm -hmm. After what you don't know, you ever seen that? Um, I forget there was this movie, right? With uh, I forget the name of the guy, I forget the name, but he, um, and and you know, someone might say it, but he was rich, and his father said, For you to get all my riches, you got to pass high school because he dropped out, you know, he didn't care because he had all the money, and they bullied this one guy, so he said, You know what, man, I'm gonna start making everything wrong. And start making it right. So he called up the guy and said, yo, man, I want to apologize to you. I'm sorry. I messed up. And the guy said, you know what? Thank you for the apology. And when he hung up, he pulled out a notepad and it says, kill list. He was the next one on the list to die. And he skipped him. So you don't know what that good morning, you don't know how to change the trajectory of that man's life or that man's day. That smile can just brighten up his day. Absolutely. I mean, you've said a million. You, you just don't know how much things, man. It's the little I thing. It. I, I see it every day. I see that every day. You just don't know. You, you don't. It, you don't know. But let me say this too. Um, going back to that comment, um, our community though it has definitely changed because um, here over here at SB Nation, um, I consider all of you all a part of my community, and typically the ones that get me really get me. I mean, it's almost like y'all are really in my head, you know, because I do a lot of talking and I don't say everything, not intentionally. It's just the way that I think. And I still feel like y'all get me. So even the ones that are new to the channel, I still feel like they get me. So you all are a part of my community. So even though social media is here and my community outside of social media is very directional, um, I can touch. I have over 4000 subscribers, guys. Beautiful. I need all y'all to turn your notification bell on. Now, just think if YouTube actually turned all 4,000 of those notification bells on and allow all those people to get these alerts, which y'all know they don't. They only do about 14 percent. I'm just telling you all that. But what if they did and and we all showed up one day and we all talked and had the same conversation that we had now? Just how just how strong would that be? Because we would be all be probably of like minds or needing a change in life or, or something you know, hopefully SB would be influencing something positive, like like Bolo just said, a smile in the morning would this change your life because I never knew exactly where you are. So if I smile, <coughs> excuse me, and I say, you know what, if somebody didn't tell you today, I appreciate you. There it is. Because you know I, what that, with that too, I think SB? I did that today. Somebody came. Um, I don't know. Somebody I was talking to. I, I did it today. Oh, oh, uh, big cap. If somebody didn't tell somebody, he was talking about somebody. Um, calling him a simp. That man is married. He's doing what he's <laughs> supposed to do. I'm like, forget that. If nobody showed you value today, here it is right here. You don't just supposed to do. Keep doing it. You know, men don't get that a lot. Women don't get that a lot. And in the spaces that I'm in, you know, I say it's mostly all men. Y'all know that. And, and police officers and different men like that, they be having a hard day. Y'all. Because they deal with a lot of stuff. I mean, early in the morning, they be dealing with it. So if you just say hello to them, you smile or you say something crazy just to get them off of whatever it is. They'd be so joyous. They'd be like all day long. They'll talk to you. Every time you see them, they got something to say to me. I mean, it just makes a huge difference. So our communities yeah. have definitely changed, but look, look at this example, SB. Here's the simplicity in how small words can mm -hmm. mean something. Listen, you know, first off, let's understand doctors typically on the Westerner side, they're not here. They don't treat the sickness. They treat the symptom. Right. So the longer they keep you coming, the more money they, they, they make. Right. 
So this is why only 14% of the bells go off because they don't want the sickness to be cured. Right. They want the sadness to continue. And, and that's that, that therein lies the problem. That's where the problem is. So at the end of the day, when we sit down and, and, and we speak and, and we talk about truth, and not my truth or your truth, we talk about the Good. truth because mm -hmm. it belongs to nobody, right? Right. So say my opinion or my story, which is a different thought process. It is so important that you use your life as a light. A lot yep. of us go through life as victims. Instead of pivoting and looking at your trauma as a, a, an example for you to learn something, right? In the village, we have something called AAA. Not, you know, Alcoholics Anonymous. <laughs> it's AAA, AAA, right? We have acknowledgement, acceptance, and application. Right. Right. Acknowledgement that you are the reason why you're in the situation that you're in. I know it's hard to see it, but you are. It's because of you. Now, the second is acceptance, mm -hmm. accepting the ramifications of the decisions that you make because to every action is a reaction, right? Because if SB is on stage getting accolades, she don't want no one on that stage with her, but as uh, Mr. Boss, she's going to give that, 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 uh, that speech. Mm -hmm. He's going to give that speech. They don't want no light from anybody coming on. They're going to keep, keep that same energy when it's negative. Don't bring Mr. Boss in, in, in all of SB Nation on stage when it ain't good. No. Keep that same energy because that's going to grow you. That's where the growth is. And a lot of us tend not to want to grow. We tend to push. Mm -hmm. We tend to blame other people. So you being a better version of yourself after you walk out of that situation, you lose that. Because you didn't sit there and accept acceptance. It's because of me. This is where I messed up. I should have zigged when I zagged. Now I know. But when you blame SB, it was because of you. Now you're not going to learn nothing about zigging and zagging. You're going to continue to be that same man or that same woman you were 20 years ago. Now, in between acknowledgement and acceptance is the learning curve, right? Once you learn what you're supposed to learn, now you can apply it and watch it grow. You know, everything, right? There was a movie, and I always love movies. Because, you show do you and Mel. Mel is in the chat. He loves movies too. Movies. It's crazy. And the, guy, and the guy made an example. He said, if you have two glasses, two bottles, and you drop both bottles, one bottle shatters into a thousand pieces, the other bottle turns into a, 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 a weapon. So now let's apply that to people. The ground is the problem. One person hits that problem and they break apart. Mm -hmm. they the other yeah. person learns from it. Yeah, jump mm -hmm. yeah. That's what you need to do, guys. You need to learn from your problem. Talk therapy is one of the best therapies that you can go through because it has it. It has you relive it. But here's the beauty in talk therapy. You've already gone through the pain physically. What's tormenting you is the mental anguish and the mental pain, which is worse than physical. So you have to go through, you have to mend it. Remember, all chapters in your life are not going to be happy when you close them. But what is important is that it's closed. So now you can forgive yourself and move on. You don't have to carry that bag. And that's what we've been doing. We've been carrying this bag for so long, SB, that we don't want to forgive ourselves. Every time something is said, we get triggered. And we get angry and we relive this situation in our minds. And you can see the vitriolic spirit that we have on us. And right now I'm clenching my, my fist and we get angry and we get, Papi, suave, chill. I understand. It's time, to, it's time to get free. It is so time to be free. <laughs> it's time to be free. I know it's easier said than done. Here's the thing. Let's go through it. Look at you today. Yeah. When you give this information to your youngins, whether it be your son or your daughter, you don't want to give them that information with your fear, with your anger, with your malice, with your strife. This is what you will do. This is what you do. So I hate, you know, when women say, you know, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. No, you can't teach something that you're not. Hmm. So if you're angry with that man. Because he left you for whatever reason, but you know he's a good father. Maybe he wasn't a good husband, 
but he's a damn sure good father. You put him in a system that was created, like you said the other day, created for men that do not take care of their children. And you put him in this system and he is treated indecent. He is treated like an animal. How do you expect him to react? Can't win. You can't win. So now you make him something that you thought was going to work. Now he looks at his child as a bill. Yeah, definitely. A monthly invoice. Definitely. Definitely. Oh, I'm taking that. You know, I steal stuff. I'm going to take that. <laughs> monthly invoice. That's <laughs> So I'll give you a call. Bo, you Bo, we, we got to do this again, you and I. Um, we got to come up with something good because um, we're getting we, they're responding to this very well, and it's just conversation that we're having. It is for everybody, and I appreciate it so much. I appreciate you being here, but I've been here two hours, and you know I get tired of talking sometimes, and I just need to rest in my thoughts. <laughs> But listen, before we go, yeah, 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 yeah. whatever, <laughs> Sir Hell, thank you so much for your $9.99 super chat. He says, just want to give like you flowers and celebrate the work you do. Thank you, Sir Hell. Guess what? Even though it's the end of the show, you get the money line. And I'm shaking my shoulders. You ain't moving your shoulders. Look, it's no good. You have a coming out party, Bolo. You have a coming out party. <laughs> I'm killing mine. Yeah, yeah. Bolo, you gonna have yes, me and you gonna have to have a coming out party. A coming out party? What are we yeah. coming out of? Well, it ain't damn sure the closet, so we're gonna leave that. <laughs> <way>. <laughs> Word. It's just, it's just whenever this is this gonna be listen, you go you're gonna introduce yourself to the world with SB. Ooh. Don't don't start now. Don't start now. It's gonna be I'm coming me out. You. I'm yeah. gonna be wearing purple. Um all purple. Okay, I can deal with that. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute, though. It ain't go what, what you gonna have on this purple? <laughs> I don't know. I'll probably okay. have a Yankee fitted purple. Okay, purple's my favorite color. I can deal with that. I can deal with that. Yeah. Yeah, guys, listen, man. SB, guys, come on, man. It, it don't get no better. It it doesn't. And this is not blowing smoke. This is just being real. It's being a hundred, man. You know, I know that guys, you know, ladies, y'all can look at her and be intimidated. I get it. You know, it, it, it is at times. But again, it's about pivoting. It is. It is. I'm telling you it is. And, and I'll tell you why. And then I guess, you know, because I'm long winded. I'll tell you why. A lot of the times people look up at the mountain and they'll see that person that's at the top. And they all they see is just the terrain. Right. All they see is the distance. But when they look at someone that is closer to them, they're able to connect more because that person is closer. But here's the thing. Aspirations. This is not a woman boasting. This is a woman giving you information, being that lighthouse on the beach saying, this is where I messed up. This is where I failed. This is where I tripped. Don't make these mistakes. This is not her trying to be braggadocious at all. That is nope. not the spirit. At all. So if yeah. that's what you think you're getting, you need to look in the mirror. That's coming from you. Because a lot of the times, again, the Tommy uh, thing is when you realize that you're the problem, which a lot of people don't want to realize, you then have to realize that you are the solution. You have to. So look in the mirror, man. That's the first thing. That's why the Lord tells you, love your brothers. You love yourself. A lot of us don't love ourselves. We don't right. know how to. We were never taught to. So, so thank you. Thank you for having me in the show. But before I go, I'm going to let y'all know that on Sunday, I need all of y'all to be there. We'll probably do a pre-show on Sunday, but we're going to be over on Sir Hale's channel Sunday night for Super Sunday. It's at 930 Eastern time. But again, me and Mr. Boss probably do a... Um, Sir Hale don't send me invites no more. He don't send me invites anymore. He don't send you invites. I don't get invites. Wow. But I'm inviting you. I'm inviting everybody. <laughs> right now. So so hell, you. And, then, and then you and I are going to continue to talk about a coming out party. We're going to continue. Definitely. Let's do, let's <laughs> do it. Let's uh, do one more thing before we go. Missionary Mike, thank you so much for your cash app. I appreciate you so much. <laughs> um, I'm glad that you're here. Listen, Bolo and I are going to do this again. We're going to do it several times. And 
and we're gonna have just a question and answer night and we want y'all to come up and just whatever you have bang, for us. bang bang that's gonna be bang. fun that'll be fun hell so, yeah that's gonna be fun um keep that in mind below we'll talk about it but yes ma'am Get yourself ready. Now, let me know if I got to get you a purple SB Nation hat. I got, Ooh, I got, purple, I got, I got purple SB Nation sweatshirt. So you remember that, right? So I do. I do. We might, we might need to wear purple. Let's get purple. <laughs> so, all right, guys. Listen, thank you so much for being here. Make sure you join us on Friday for the subscriber party. 4,000 plus party on Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern time. I'll see you guys again. Thank you so much for everything that you do. I can't sit Have still a good night. for a minute. Love you guys. Love you, SB. Mr. Love Boss. Bye-bye. Down with them dickens. Let's get around. Like it's the 80s rain. Round, let's keep spinning. Let's keep playing these games that we don't want to finish. And I'm sorry if that sounds a bit bitter. But I am to the core. You want the whole damn thing. Then you ask him for more. You want that old jive swing. You take up all of the floor. I'm fine with standing at the edge of the door. You be the life of the party. I blend in with the core. You drink it all to Bacardi. Tell the bottles no more. Let's take it back for this started. You want the love, I don't got it. Got my soul on the road. You scream and stay. Please don't go. Please don't think it's in me to listen to Bo. It's so different, we distance, we roam into zones where nothing could hurt anymore I just wish I was home when I stepped through front door but Instead I'm alone and completely unsure And even though he was screaming out with the best of intentions, I don't get it Why do you always gotta ask me to stay? Why you always gotta go? Playing house, this ain't a home with your soul on the road. Say, why you always gotta go? Playing house, this ain't a home with your soul on the road. See, I've been lost in my thoughts, and my thoughts they too are scared to usher your off. Sorry, Mom. I just thought you were my world. Now you're not. And I'm just sitting, smoking, sloping in the days. Cause my days ain't been the same since I drove here. The way. I remember the way you wrote letters in blue ink. You and me was in love. Think about what your crew think. I know your moms probably think I'm a bastard. Your pops probably want to beat my to death and take up to my casket. But I got sick of fighting, bickering, fussing over nothing, cussing. Instead of and watching the death of discussions that we once had Days that we once spent in the backseat of our cars We the poets at sunset It's funny how love can fall out the foreground Get pushed into the back of your mind We used to twist this bliff and laugh and relax Are you crying? And I'm trying to find the reasons So I ask, does forever ever happen? Or is it always fade to black? I can't say No, I always gotta go Playing house, this ain't a home with my soul on the road. I can't stay. No, I always gotta go. Playing house, this ain't a home with my soul on the road.